We are now Action. recording. We are now recording. So right, we'll right. have Brian start off with a little number for you just to kind of get things moving sure. along. And then once Brian is done uh, with the first number, has nothing to do with the class today, might have, I don't know. Um, we'll have Sean jump in and um, go over some Zoom tips and what have you. So take it away. I think I'll just do a couple uh, measures here. Let's just make sure the volume's okay. Maybe you guys can give me a thumbs up. Sure. Just a tiny bit loud, but not too bad. Bring it down that one notch. We were we were testing it out beforehand, and we and were kind of debating over one notch or two notch. One. All right, so I think you're good. All righty, here we go. How was that? Pretty good? Volume-wise? Yep, that sounded good. All right. Two thumbs up, or at least John one. John told me yesterday that I have to not use the expression pedal as much. I told him I have happy feet, so I'm trying to keep my right foot off the expression pedal today. <laughs> keep the volume a little more consistent for everybody. So, Sean, I'll turn it over to you. Do you want to do some Zoom tips and tricks? Sure. I got a couple things for today here. Uh, Let's see. Let's start with this. Uh, you can hear me, right? Okay, I see a thumbs up. All right. Yes. Just making sure my audio is working. All right. So uh, first thing, uh, we talked about this, I think, last week, but I'll review it again because we got some new students, as always. So uh, first thing I'll mention is, you know, if, if you want your video to be on, uh, some people don't like their video on, and that's okay. Some people want it on and say, how do I work that? Uh, if you want to turn your video on so we can see you, that will be on your bottom left of the screen here on your computers, um, and it should say start video down there. Um, if your video's on and you want to turn it off, uh, maybe you didn't get dressed fully this morning or something, uh, you can turn that off if you want to. It just says stop video. So start or stop video, that's on your bottom left of the screen. Uh, you might have to hover the mouse over there, or if you're on an iPad or, or phone, you can tap the screen and it should pop up somewhere with that. Uh, next up, just like any class, even if you're in person, you can raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, if you notice, uh, you're all what's called muted right now, so you can't talk, we can't hear you. Uh, but if you'd like to say something or if you have a question, uh, as, as long as it pertains to what we're talking about, that's usually helpful. Uh, you want to go to the bottom of your screen and right toward the center, it should say participants somewhere around there. And when you click on that, it gives you a couple options on the bottom and it says uh, raise hand. So that's all you do is you click on that and then it kind of t notifies us that, oops, somebody's got a question. Let's stop for a second. Um, we might keep going for a little while, but if you keep that hand raised, we'll get to you eventually. Uh, if maybe your question was answered, you don't have a question anymore, you can lower your hand as well. So that is it for that. Um, and I think, I think that's all I got for today. That should be good. So I'll send it back to you. Alrighty. Thank you, Sean. And uh, if anybody has any questions, if you want to raise your hand uh, you know, on your screen, or if you can do what Sean said by clicking the raise hand button on Zoom, uh, please do it at any time. It's it's best to answer a question as soon as you have it. So if you yeah. Have, also, sure you also, if if you can't find the button, I've had some people say, you know what, I just can't find it. You know, you're free to do this in front of your camera. You know, I can usually see that, so I'll I'll call you out anyway or unmute you if that's the case. 
But otherwise, yeah, figure out that feature raise hand. That'll be most helpful. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, it's great to be with you guys here virtually. And uh, I understand we have some folks from Arizona and uh, from Florida and even all the way over in the UK. So that's pretty cool. I think that, you know, in these kind of unprecedented times, it's great that we found a platform to all get together for some for some education and some fun and keep our music going. So um, I'm really glad to be here. I'm actually coming from our corporate office, which some of you guys have been to over in Clearwater. Uh, and I'm right here in Octave Hall. So the instrument that I played on for you just now is a Sterling. Uh, many of you uh, have had that or maybe currently have that. I'll also be showing you some stuff on an EZ4 uh, later in the class, but I did wanna come out right away and say that all of the stuff that we talk about today applies to every single instrument. So everybody can do the stuff that we're gonna talk about, whether you have an EZ1 or an ARIA. And it looks like we got about 55 people on right now. So I'm guessing we got a good mix of all those instruments. And uh, I'll be sure to try to break down what features are where on your instrument and uh, we'll, we'll have a good time today. So the, the workshop that I'm doing today is called What's in My Music Style or Who is in My Band? And uh, the music style, of course, or, or some people they used to call it rhythm style, uh, is whenever you touch one of your blue buttons. So you can see over here maybe on the Sterling, they're over here to the left. And in fact, any instrument that you have, Easy One, Easy Ten, Fanfare, anything, your blue buttons on the left are gonna be your music styles. And those are the ones that say like country or big band or rock or march or whatever you have there. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're not really gonna be dealing with any of the melody stuff today. This is all gonna be uh, music style related. So uh, Robert, if uh, I'm gonna put this in the chat here and uh, you guys can jot this down if you want, but if you have your chat pulled up, I'm going to show you the five different things we're going to talk about. So I, I put who's in my music style and you can see maybe that there are five things there. And these are the five kind of sections or components to any music style that you have. Doesn't matter what genre it is. These five components are all going to be there uh, with the exception of any of your pianist or guitarist styles. So for example, if I were to put on, you know, like a ballad piano, it would sound like this, it would be just piano. Right? Or if I put on a Latin guitarist, it would be just the guitar. Okay, so we're not gonna be talking about those. We're talking about all of the full, full band styles today. Okay? And uh, so I'm gonna start off with the drums. I'm gonna more or less go in order here on my list. And uh, starting with the drums, I, I kind of joked yesterday that you know, Robert had mentioned that I, I do play in bands. I play in wedding bands and big bands and all that. And uh, the, the drummer, I wouldn't tell my drummer friends this, as I was joking yesterday, but they are probably one of the most important people in the band. And that's why I'm going to start off with the drums, because they actually can determine what style of music you're playing. And I showed uh, some of the students yesterday, if I were to put on a Latin drummer, you'd know probably right away that this is a Latin style. This is just the drums. All right, sounds like a Latin beat, right? If I were to put on something like this, you'd probably know that it was a kind of a swing or a big band, like that. And if I put on something like this, you'd probably know it was a march, right? So the drummer can be very important in determining the style of music that you're playing. And that'll often help you pick a music style if you ever are looking at a piece and uh, you know, maybe it's not something that you've learned in class and you're thinking, well, what style do I use? Oftentimes what I think about is, well, what kind of drummer would that be? Would it be a Latin drummer? Would it be a swing drummer or whatever? And so each of these sections that I'm gonna show you today have volume controls, okay? And uh, the reason that this is, I think that it's so important to note all this stuff is that you can then determine who you want in your band at different times, okay? So I'm going to show you where the drum volume is. And I'll start over here on the Sterling. And this is one that's the same uh, in any instrument that you have. So this one happens to be what we call a big window instrument. This is like the double wide window here on the Sterling. But no matter what size window you have, if you look right in the center, it's going to be just to the left of center. And you're going to see an up and a down. And it'll either say drum volume Okay, and of course, up would get the drums louder, down would make the drums softer. 
Or if you have an E-series instrument, like an EZ1, EZ4, uh, EZ10, et cetera, you're actually going to have a picture of a drum set. So just like you'd picture a drummer playing on stage, it doesn't actually say drums, but there's a picture of a full drum set, and you have the same up and down volume. Okay. And why that's cool to know, um, I don't know if, I'm sure some of you guys have seen Robert play uh, in person. He does some wonderful concerts. And I recently, over Zoom, got to see him do a performance of Besame Mucho. So if any of you guys have ever seen him play that, what he does is he starts off with a very, very basic accompaniment. Okay, and I'm going to show you what that sounds like. And I'll show you in a minute how to, how to get this, too. Okay, so this is what his sounds like, Besame Mucho, just the accompaniment. I'm hoping you guys can hear that. It's a little quiet on my end, but... Yep, sounds you fine. Should, you should be hearing just guitar. All right, and then the, the song would start. Okay, but you might have seen that I had to push some buttons to get there. Okay, and that's what we're going to be learning about today, because if I didn't push those buttons, this is what the style would sound like. Right, big full accompaniment. You had drums, you had bass, you had the extra strings and all that. And so by knowing these sections that we're gonna talk about today, the, the five that I listed there, uh, you're gonna be able to do something like that should you want to. You can take out different parts of your accompaniment. So if you ever wanna add the drums or take away the drums, Remember, that's just to the left of center. No matter if you have a huge window like this or just a very small display screen, like an easy one or something, it's just to the left of center and you'll have an up and a down. Um, another kind of cool example, if you're playing, uh, I mentioned the pianist and guitarist styles. Let's say you're playing uh, like a piano ballad here. Put on one of my favorites and uh, do something like this. It's gonna start off with just piano but then you'll see me, I'm gonna hold down the drums like this, and you'll hear the drummer come in. So I think that's pretty cool. So any of those pianist or guitarist styles, you can always bring in the drummer or the opposite way was the first way that I showed you. If you want to do something like what Robert did, you can take away the drums to start your arrangement. Okay. So that one is the only volume control that's kind of separate from the rest of them. That's what, kind of why I wanted to start with that. One more time, that's just to the left of center, no matter what instrument you have. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about here is your bass player. Okay, now most of you guys know what the bass is, but uh, in, your, in your instruments here, it's actually not necessarily always bass. I don't know if you guys all knew that. Um, oftentimes it will be an electric bass, which is what most people think, you know, I've kind of played like that. It could also be uh, what they call an acoustic bass or an upright bass. You usually see that in jazz and swing music, and that's the big one they hold up like this. Um, but depending on the style, if it's a march or a polka, your bass could actually be not a bass, right? If you picture a marching band, probably some folks here may have played in marching band at some point in their lives, or at least you've seen one. And uh, no marching band that I've ever seen has an actual bass player, okay? And in marching bands, what you have is actually a tuba, and the tuba is the bass, or it's actually a sousaphone, um, which is kind of a marching band version of the tuba. So if I put on our bass player for this march, you're actually gonna hear a tuba. So check this out. So there's our marching band tuba. Okay. And then if I put on something like, I don't know, let's do like a big band. I mentioned that's gonna be usually something more like an upright bass. Okay. And if I were to do something like country or 
rock or something like that, you'd, you'd more, more likely find an electric bass. Okay. So let's talk about how to control the bass. Now, the reason why I think knowing this is important is uh, usually depending on how people hear things, and keep in mind, everybody hears things a little bit differently. It's not just uh, the volume, but sometimes it's the frequency. You might be able to hear the higher sounds pretty well, but you can't hear the low end very well, the bass. Or it could be the opposite. You hear the bass really well and the high end not so much. And so they give us these volume controls so that we can adjust the instruments to, to suit our preference. I mean, they come out of the box sounding amazing, but you can still tweak it a little bit to get it even better so that it's right for you. We, I know we have a, uh, uh, an example I always use, one of our students in Sun City, who says if the bass is too loud, it makes her, quote, physically ill. <laughs> So she always has to turn down Yikes. the bass a little bit. Or if you have maybe, if you have neighbors real close, you don't want to shake the walls, you might want to turn down your bass volume. So uh, if you have an easy one or an easy two, um, or let me, back, let me backtrack a second. I, I will say that some of these controls, so like the bass, the Genie, and the Orc Plus, and even the lower left on some instruments, might be lumped into one setting. And what I mean by that is instead of having separate controls for each one, like you would on something like a Sterling or a Fanfare or something like that, um, the bass, the Genie, the Orc Plus, and the lower might all be lumped into something that's called either style or accompaniment. It's usually shortened as a, a comp with a little period there. Okay, so these controls, no matter what you have, are going to be all the way on the left. Okay. So what I'm going to show you here, and I'm going to take us on a little, little journey here. If you get seasick, you might want to look away. I'm going to move my tripod here. Woohoo! Here we go. Sean liked this part yesterday. Whoa! Whoa. So I'm going to bring us over here to the lovely Easy Four. Now the Easy Four is the first one in the E line that has this bass volume. So you can see, I'll give you a little shot here of the center. There's your display window. And then you can see next to tempo, there's the picture of the drums that I was talking about. So that was the last one. Now, if I go all the way over here to the left, okay, you see you have your master volume and then you have bass. Okay, now if you have an easy one or an easy two, you also have that accompaniment there, the accomp. That will also take down the bass, but it will take down all the other stuff too. The, the easy four I really like because it has the separate bass adjustment, okay? And so what happens, I'm going to bring us back over here. What happens is you can lower or raise the bass volume depending on your preference. Okay, so if I, uh, looks like my angle's pretty good here. Hopefully you can see okay. So remember, no matter what you have, um, you look all the way to the left on your instrument and there's going to be a section of volume controls. Now on the Sterling here, on any big window instrument, can be all the way over on the left, usually right in the middle of the controls. So there's five separate ones here. And it says bass volume. It's usually gonna be two orange buttons. Okay, and so they go up and down. So if I put on, let's go to country here. We'll bring in some drums just to have kind of a reference. Now right now, my bass volume is all the way up. So depending on what you're listening on, if it's speakers or headphones or your phone, it might sound loud or it might not sound that loud. Here in Octave Hall, it's booming. I don't want to annoy everybody else in the building, so I'm going to lower the bass volume. Now hopefully you all could hear a difference there. I lowered it to about just below half of the volume it just was. Okay. Now that'll work on any style that has a bass player on it, which is going to be all of them pretty much. Okay, and it's always in the same spot. Again, the Easy Four is the first instrument in the line that has that, and going forward, every other instrument also has that. Okay, now if you have something that just says a comp, remember you can lower the bass, but it's also going to take out everything else that, that comes after it that I'm going to talk about. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions so far? I want to make sure everyone's kind of on board and, and not missing anything. Now's your chance to use that raise hand feature. That's right. Oh, we, we got, got one. one. Didi, go ahead, Didi. Oop. Might not have audio for her here. Okay. My 
um, mm -hmm. base is on, it's actually on to the right, not to the left. It's separate from the, um, I'm, I'm, I have a conductor. So where you were saying your base is on the left, mine is actually on the right. Yeah, so on the conductor, the, your base is on the right, but it's not actually a volume control, I don't think, is it? Does it have it says, volume? It says base lower. It has base, yeah, oh, that's volume. for the lower, yeah. Base yeah. lower volume strings organ, but I don't, I don't have it on the left. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. You, you, if you have it on the right, it's usually, I don't think, a volume control, but it's, it's maybe it lets you choose different base options, like eight or six. But it, go, it, it, ha it has up and down. It has arrow up and an arrow down. Okay, maybe, maybe it does. I, I, I'm not sure on the uh, conductor. I don't have one. In yeah, that's the, the that's the base for the uh, lower left, I think. Yeah, so I think it works the same. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, though. We also had a, uh, a comment, somebody who has a legend. Actually, while you're doing that, I'm going to go components. check and get a clarification on that answer. So Thanks, keep, Robert. To keep going while you're doing that, I'll come right back. So yeah, I, I got a message too that uh, from somebody who's got a legend says it's not quite the same for the accompaniment. So that we're actually going to get to that one next. So uh, the numbers three and four, the genie uh, slash basic, and the orc plus is the accompaniment on yours. Um, and and let me yeah let me let me uh, jump back to what we were talking about too because that kind of ties in. Um, everybody, no matter what instrument you have, has a dedicated drum volume. So the drum is going to be separate. And that, that's true on the Lowry instruments. That's also true on the Estes. I don't know if anybody has one of our lovely new SD instruments. We have two of those, the uh, Discovery 3 and the Freedom 3. Those also have a dedicated drum volume, just like the Lowry's do. Okay. Um, then the rest of them, though, bass, genie, orc plus, and lower, on the larger instruments, if you go up to like a fanfare and above, you have dedicated controls for each one of those options. So you can lower the bass, but not the Orc Plus. Or you could lower the Genie, but not the lower left. Um, if you have an Easy One, for example, or an Easy Two, you can lower that stuff, but it's one volume control for all of that stuff. So you have one for the drums, one volume for all of the rest of it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you go up to an Easy Four, like I showed you, you have the drum volume in the middle, but then you have a separate dedicated bass volume. So the bass is a separate adjustment. And then your accompaniment would cover the genie, uh, the orc plus, and the lower. Okay. Um, I see we do have another question. Looks like uh, Amy. Amy? Go ahead. Amy. Uh, yes. Uh, I have a Rialto, mm -hmm. and I'm not very familiar with all these buttons yet. Do you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, now, on the lower, uh, way on the lower side, I'm seeing equalizer, and then it says master, reverb, bass, style, and low, lower. I don't know what it is. Is that yep. what you're talking That's, about? That is exactly the right spot, yep. I see, okay, because I don't know if you're talking about the same thing that I have here. Yep. On, on the Rialto, you have what we call it. That's one of the big window instruments. So you have yes. a, a nice display window in the middle. Um, and you're going to have all of the options that we're talking about here. Because I'm also seeing this uh, drum only or drum variation. Yeah, the, the drum variation is, is kind of a separate thing. Um, right today, I'm you know, mainly just talking about the volumes. But you do also have the drum variation, which gives you a separate drum beat for each style. I have the drum beat also on the next to the screen with, with the tempo. Yep, yep. And those are kind of kind of separate from the stuff that I'm talking about, but you definitely do have that. Okay. 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 And uh, it looks like Robert's there with the conductor. Maybe he's got an answer for what we were talking about before. Robert? Yeah, I was trying to look for my raise hand feature and I don't have it. I, oh, because I could just unmute. Okay. Um, okay, so for the conductor, people that have conductor and voyagers, if there's anybody with one of those two instruments, there is a separate bass volume control, and it's listed under the, the bass and accompaniment. So what may happen, I'm not 100% until I try it out, but the bass will definitely turn out, but it may also affect the, the lower sound. But more than likely, looking at it, it will adjust just the 
uh, volume of the bass, the actual bass okay. line. The boom, boom, boom. That's good to know. Okay. Very good. And thank you for whoever asked that that question. I forget who that was, but thanks for bringing that up. Okay, I mean, so so far we've talked about the drums and the bass. So I want to move along to uh, Genie slash Basic. And the reason why there's uh, two names for it is if you have an A-series instrument, which would be something like a, a Prestige. In fact, even before that, if you had a, like a Stardust or a Royale, uh, Prestige, Sterling, Patriot, Liberty, um, it's going to be called uh, Genie. Okay. If you have an E-series instrument, it's going to be called Basic. Okay, with a couple of exceptions, like the fanfare and the journeys. Uh, uh, I think they still call that genie. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, um, you have one of the two, and it means the same thing. That's the good news. So whether you have genie or basic, it's the same exact function. They just changed the terminology uh, somewhere along the way. So the important part is that you know what it does. So uh, you may have heard the term rhythm section, or sometimes it's called the core band, depending on who you talk to. Uh, but what that means is you have, if you picture like a jazz big band on the stage, normally it's like 15 or 17 people. You have the drummer, which we talked about already. You got the bass player, which we talked about. And then the genie would be usually either a pianist or a guitarist. Okay. Um, so when I put on, let's put on a big band style here, since that's what I mentioned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out everything except for the genie. Now remember, if you have like a marquee, grand marquee aria, it's going to be called basic. So hopefully everybody can hear that. What you have is just the guitarist strumming, strumming a simple pattern. Okay, so you can think of the genie as the player in the band who's kind of trying to keep the beat. You know, just it's not, not playing anything fancy. It's more or less just some accompaniment to kind of help you keep the beat a little bit. Okay, now it's not always going to be a guitarist. It could be a pianist, or in some cases it could be something else too, but it's always going to be some kind of simple pattern. Okay, if we go over to a Latin style, like a bossa nova, everybody's going to have this too. And I do just the genie. Sounds like this. Now in this case, it's an electric piano. So just kind of a nice rhythmic pattern, just kind of simple. Okay. And so between drums, basic, and genie, that's kind of like your rhythm section or your core band. Okay. Now, this is where the, uh, the volume controls can get a little bit different. Um, on the larger instruments, if you can see, you have uh, the, your center screen here, and you kind of go past your styles then you usually have a little slanted panel over here in the corner. And it'll say things like auto bass, MCS, drum variation, somebody mentioned. Um, but then there'll be a thing that says genie or basic, depending on what instrument you have. Okay. And that's on the big window instruments. If you don't have a big window instrument, like it was on the easy four, for example, um, both the genie and then the next thing we're going to talk about, Orc Plus, will be covered under your accompaniment volume control. So if you remember I showed you, I don't want to make everybody seasick again with the camera, but you had your master volume, your bass, and then your accompaniment. So the accompaniment's going to control that. Uh, looks like we got a question from uh, Diane. Yes. Um, on the uh, fanfare, would that be called style? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. I mentioned that yesterday and I forgot to do that today. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. On some instruments, um, it'll be covered under style, although that may cover your orchestra plus also. Okay. Now on the fanfare, I believe you do have a separate button, which just turns off the orc plus. Yep. Yep. That's okay. Right. But I think if you do, if you do um, style all the way down, I think it does take away both of those, both genie and orc plus. Okay. Good question, though. Yes. On some instruments, Fanfare Journey is another example. Um, you will have, a, it'll say style instead of a comp. Okay. So again, just think of that genie as the, or basic. That's why they, they, they changed the term to basic, although I don't think most uh, 
real musicians would like to be called the basic player, but somebody's got to do it. And uh, what that does is it just kind of helps keep the band um, kind of moving forward. They're not playing anything real fancy, just kind of simple playing to help, uh, help the melody sound good. Okay, so that's your genie or basic. Um, the next one is Orc Plus, which is short for Orchestra Plus. Now, these are the fancy players. Okay, remember the genie is not the fancy player. Orchestra Plus, those are the fancy players. So if you think about the big band, you know, picture that big band on stage. Hopefully you've all been to a concert at some point where there's a big band up there. You have your rhythm section. Remember that's drums, bass, and then you have your guitarist or your pianist. So that's the core band. Now the orchestra plus is everybody else in that band. So you have trumpets, trombones, clarinets, uh, you might, uh, saxophones, you might have flute all those players, and they're typically playing the fancy stuff. They're not just playing basic stuff. They're really kind of playing some, some cool things. So if we go back to our big band over here, and if you have a, an E-series instrument, big band is called standards now, if you want to try this for yourself. Okay, we'll highlight the genie again real quick. This is our basic player. Okay, now listen to the difference. Turn that off. Now here are the Orc Plus players. These are the fancy players. Trombones, saxophones. Now think about trying to tap your foot to the beat there. That'd be almost impossible to figure out because they're playing all the fancy stuff. Okay, so that's Orc Plus. That button is right next to the Genie that I hopefully you can see where I'm pointing over here. Same on that slanted panel. Um, you also do have a dedicated Orc Plus volume control back here, just next to it. Okay. And uh, if you're going on the fanfare or above, you also have a button that's called Orc Plus. Just like on, on the great big ones here, you can touch Orc Plus. Um, fanfare journey and above will have that. And uh, you could also use your style button uh, the volume control on the left to turn all that stuff down if you like to. Um, and I'd like to highlight why I think that that's really important. I don't want you to think I'm just telling you this just to tell you. So there's a couple things. One is, if you're like my students that I've taught, which I've had the privilege of having hundreds or maybe thousands even since I've started with Fletcher, when you put on certain styles, uh, big band included, which is why I'm highlighting that one, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a student say, I just get so confused when I'm trying to play my song because there's so much stuff going on in the background. I turn on this music style and I hear all this stuff and it's all these notes and I can't figure out what I'm doing and it's distracting. So if you've ever been in that position, man, the Orc Plus button is going to be your friend because listen to this. I'm going to play a song, just a few measures of it with the Orchestra Plus on. Remember, that's all the fancy players. And then I'm going to play it again without Orc Plus on and tell me which one is clearer with the melody. A lot clearer with it off, yeah. Yeah, hopefully you could hear a big difference there. And it's not to say that one way is better or worse than the other or that one's right and one's wrong. It's just if you've been in that position, and I know many of my students have, where there's just too much stuff happening in the background, this could be with any style. I just, I'm showing big band because that's a pretty good example, I think. But it could be Latin music, it could be gospel, it could be marches, it could be anything. If you're finding too much stuff, the one button fix, just touch Orc Plus. Or if you have uh, the accompaniment or style volume control on the left, you turn that down. And that'll that moonlight, take away all that the Moonlight things. Serenade example you did was really good yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you that too. So, so that's one big application for that. I think that's a really good one. The other one though that I've seen a lot too, and I, I kind of discovered this for myself. Um, I used Moonlight Serenade yesterday. Uh, I think I'm gonna pick a different style today. I'm gonna pick, uh, you guys ever heard of a song, uh, Autumn Leaves, and the music style is called Autumn Keys? Okay, so that's one of my favorite songs to play. Now, there's a, there's a person in this band who plays the muted trumpet. 
And if you've used this style and run into this, you're probably rolling your eyes right now because this is one of the most annoying things that can happen is when uh, the, somebody in the band uh, interrupts your melody, which is really not good. Now, if you're playing autumn keys and you're, or sorry, if you're using autumn keys as the style and you're playing autumn leaves, it fits perfectly. Listen to this trumpet part. Hopefully you could hear that trumpet player filling in perfectly with that song. Now here's the annoying part, which I said you might be rolling your eyes if you've run into this on this style before, is if you play almost any other song, but you want to use that style, because it really is a good style, the trumpet player is playing all over your melody. And I told the students uh, yesterday that if you did that in a real band, you get fired. No one's going to have you back, because you know, the melody is supposed to be the highlight of the song. And if you've got some trumpet player on the other end of the stage going, bah, 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 and you're trying to play the melody, believe me, that's, that's a one-time thing. And you're not asked to the next gig. So let me show you what happens. So I'm going to play, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll try to play Moonlight Serenade using this uh, style. Not good, right? Or take another one, they take Misty, for example. I can't even finish it. So that, uh, that trumpet player is playing all over the melody, and hopefully you could hear it too, but it really does not sound good for, for that song or anything really but Autumn Leaves. So let's come back to our Orc Plus button, right? I told you that's the one button fix. You touch Orc Plus off, and now he's not going to play anymore. So listen now. Listen how much cleaner this sounds. Yeah, nice. It's so much prettier that way. So again, the Orc Plus are going to be all of your fancy players. And that's either going to be controlled with your Orc Plus button all the way over here on that slanted panel on the left. Or of course, you do have the kind of the dimmer switch up and down. Or if it's not called Orc Plus, it might be called style or a comp, okay, for accompaniment. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? I see somebody, I see Clive raising his hand. Go ahead, Clive. Yes, it's perhaps take a little bit further, but having set that uh, orchestra plus or turn it off, and when you finally record your, the, the song you've played and to save it, will it automatically remember you've turned orchestra off, plus off? You mean if you, if you went to play a new sense? song after that? No, you know sometimes you want to save what you've played, the, the background or everything else like that. So it's, it's automatically done. So any savings you do to, stick. to the stick. Oh, yeah. You if, you, if you save it to a stick, is that what you mean? Yes. So if you turn off Orchestra Plus, does it remember that? Yes, absolutely. So if you're going to save anything to a stick, um, it basically takes a, a virtual snapshot of the instrument. So anything that you've done, you know, if you've turned on Alter Style or turned off Orc Plus or Transpose, it'll save everything. Thanks. Thank you. And actually, that brings me to a question that we had yesterday, too, which I, I should probably uh, address here, too. Um, nothing that I've shown you today, uh, you don't need a stick for, okay? So you can do this, and of course, like I said, you can do it on Easy 4, which doesn't have a USB, but just wanted to make sure everybody knows that you can do all this stuff, whether you have a stick or not. Now, the, the other side of that coin is that if you're going to make some changes, um, it's pretty hard to do this stuff all on the fly. 
So if you do have a USB stick available, you have a, a USB drive on your instrument, it's definitely helpful to save some of those changes. Okay, but if you don't know how to do that, that's a whole, whole other workshop. Okay, so I got one other section here left, and uh, this is the lower left part of your keyboard. Okay, um, now on, uh, Robert's going to send you a sheet uh, through email that I made that shows kind of graphics of these little things that we talked about today. And uh, at the end, at the bottom there, it says lower left, and it says, have you ever heard that hum? And I, I can't see too many people on the screen now, but Oh, there's the, yeah, there's the sheet. So it says, one last thing. Have you ever heard that hum? And this is your lower left keyboard. Okay. Now, most people have a two keyboard instrument, but it works whether you have a one keyboard or a two keyboard. You're going to have a certain sound or sounds on your lower left keyboard. So this does not affect the volume of your right, lower right keyboard. So for example, right now I have a trumpet. So that wouldn't affect the volume of that trumpet in this case, okay? But what's your, your lower left? Okay, I'm gonna put back on my big band style and you're gonna hear everybody in the band, okay? We're gonna put everybody on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in order and take out the stuff that I, uh, that I just showed you, okay? So we'll put on the style Okay, we're gonna take out the drummer. Okay, so the drummer's off the stage. Now we're gonna tur turn off the bass player. Okay, bass is gone. Now we're gonna turn off the genie button over here. Now we got our fancy players, the Org Plus. Gonna turn those off and everything's off. Oh wait, no it's not. <laughs> you hear that hum? That's the hum that I'm talking about. So if you've ever heard that sound, what that is, is the lower left keyboard. Now, right now it happens to be organ that's turned on there. That's that sound that you hear. Such and a delightful, all... annoying sound. I know. And uh, if, if you've never noticed that before, then you probably, it's probably not a huge deal for you. I, I personally like to turn that off because I don't like the constant hum in the background. If you're somebody who's maybe newer to the hobby, or if you have trouble hearing when the chords change. So for example, if you're going from a G chord to a C chord, and you have trouble hearing the difference, you probably don't want to turn the lower left off or down. However, if you, if you don't want to hear that hum, there is a really easy fix. So I'm gonna take us on a little, uh, little journey here. So buckle up. So if you have a big window instrument, again, this is the Sterling here, right in the center, you have two red tabs. So hopefully you can see that pretty clearly on the screen. And it says lower tabs and upper tabs. And of course the tabs are these gray and green and yellow and brown and black and purple tabs here, okay? So again, uh, most big window instruments are gonna have this. And in the middle here, what I'm gonna do is shut off that lower tabs tab, okay? That left red tab that says lower tabs. And what's gonna happen is it shuts off anything that's in the lower left keyboard, okay? So in this case, I kinda want everything to go away that's there. Now you could have stuff turned on, it doesn't matter. As soon as I turn off that lower tabs tab, it's gone. Okay, even though this stuff, you might be able to see it's still lit up, which means that it's turned on, that lower tabs tab acts as like a master switch for everything to the left on the tab section. Okay, now if you don't have tabs, so let's say you have an instrument um, like, a, like a fanfare or something like that, uh, or if you have a Rialto somebody mentioned, um, some of the instruments do and some don't have tabs, okay? So if you don't have the actual tabs here, what you can do is on the, on the far left, right by where we showed you where the bass volume is over here, okay, there's gonna be a lower volume, okay, right next to it here. And it's the same kind of dimmer switch thing as the other ones are, okay? Now, if you don't have lower, remember like if you have an easy four, you have a comp, 
just know that when you do the accompaniment down, it's going to take down your lower left, your orc plus, and your genie. Okay, because on some instruments, there's no way to separate that. On uh, fanfare and up, you do have all of those controls, so you can come right over here and touch the lower volume down, and that'll take that hum away should you want to. Okay. And uh, like I said, if it just really depends on preference. It, what, like probably 99% of the stuff that, that we teach you, you know, there's really no uh, right or wrong. It just comes down to your personal preference. And some people like to have it on, some people don't. I, I just usually prefer to turn it off if I think of it. So Robert, do you have anything to add or Sean? I think we can go to questions if anybody else has any questions. Yeah, let's open it up. Does anybody have any questions? Anything we talked about? I don't see anybody flailing about. No, I'm looking at everybody. They all look musically smarter today now. All right, we got one from Diane. Go ahead, Diane. Yeah, I'm looking at the fanfare. And um, at lower left, it says uh, flute, ensemble, and more. Let's uh, see. Yeah, because it kind of separates them out there. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at the fanfare here, too. I know you can't see me. Hopefully you can hear me here. So the lower left, what you're looking at are the buttons, and that says flute, ensemble, and more. Yes. Um, now on, uh, like, let's say on an easy four, you also have lower, and it just says ensemble and more. So those buttons are different in the sense that those let you choose the sounds that you want. So let, let's say you wanted strings instead of organ, or you wanted piano instead of guitar. Uh -huh. You can touch those buttons and then scroll through the screen to select uh, whatever instrument sound you want. Um, but if you go all the way over to the left, so on the fanfare here, it's uh, from left to right, it goes master, reverb, bass, style, and then lower. Those are just the volume controls. So that's more what I was talking about is, is your ability to, to turn it on or off if you want to. Okay, thank you. Sure. Right. I see uh, somebody called Barbara raising their hand here, I think. Go oh, ahead. Barbara's right next to me. <laughs> no, you don't look like a Barbara, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm Bud. Uh, I'd like to know if you take off over on the left side, if you take off the uh, basic. basic, will that affect if you have the MCS plus on? We have an ARIA. So the basic should not affect your MCS plus. What, what would affect it would be uh, your lower left. Okay. So the, the basic and the ORC plus, um, I believe, play the same things whether you have MCS plus or not. But your that lower is left is the one that will alter and add the, the extra notes. Is that right, Robert? That is correct. Okay. The oh. basic and the, is it ORC plus, uh, is just strictly the musicians, the band members. It has nothing to do with the chords. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. Re renew what the lower left, if you take it off, what does it take off? So it's, it's basically that hum that you hear. Oh, okay. So, for example, uh, let's pick another one. I was using big band, but let's take uh, country. Let's say we're doing like a roadside cafe. That's a style a lot of people have here. Okay. So I start turning things off. Drums, work plus, genie, bass. And then you hear that? That thing that's left is the lower left, that kind yeah. of hum. Turn that up just a little bit so everybody can hear it. There it is. You hear that? So that changes when you change a chord, which can be helpful. Okay. And and like I said, I wanna I wanna um, you know, make the point again that it's not right or wrong to have it on or off. Or, you know, if you use your dimmer switch, you know, you might want it just halfway or you might want it at 20%. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just, I want to make sure that you know that you have the option to tweak it so that the instrument goes from sounding great to like even greater, the best it could possibly be for you. Cause then now you can tweak it to suit your preferences. Yeah, and what Brian is saying is, is it's kind of interesting I'm hearing this because there's a lot of classes that I'll teach. If I have like an arrangement on a song and I'll you know, say, here, try this. Add it. You'd be surprised how many times in, in my concerts 
that I'm using rhythm styles when I do somewhere out there. He mentioned Besame Me Mucho, Ava Maria. A, the, a good portion of the songs that I play in concert when I play, I don't even have a chord sound playing in my left hand halfway, halfway through the song most of the time because the accompaniment, every, the basic, the genie, all the other stuff is going on to me is doing enough. Now think back in time to the organ days where organs had to be played with left hand, melody, and a pedal. What was the accompaniment? The accompaniment was the left hand. So organ players back then had to do a lot of work with their left hand to create this accompaniment effect, okay? And so nowadays with the instruments, the accompaniment is there. So it's like, why do I add another sound? So again, and you'll also notice that a lot of times that the instruments set up a lower sound, it's very soft in some cases because it doesn't want to be the dominant sound over the musicians. Now, I have to tell you, Brian, you must have did a great job. I'm looking at everybody here, and they all look musically smarter already. Oh, I'm looking at hear. Bernie La Mancha. He looks smarter. Even Joe Thompson looks like he's got a little... Nilda Cruz, That's saying something. You're, you're glowing with musical knowledge today. All Hi, right, Nilda. any other, any other questions things. before we uh, finish up here? We got a raise hand, and then we'll, I got a couple of great fun announcements to make. Um, before I do that, we'll, we'll answer the, question, the raise hand. We got someone virtually raising their hand and physically raising their hand, and it looks like Barbara. You can unmute her. Yeah, there. Barbara. Yeah, huh? I pressed it. She has to click it herself on there, I think. Let me see. Barbara, you have to click unmute on your side. Oh, there we go. Oh, I did it again. Sorry. Try it again. One more time, Barbara. There you go. Now, 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 yep. Now, now, now. now. Here we go. Oh, do you have two devices going on in your house? No, I do. So I shut one off. Well, yeah. The what? Which one are you looking at us right now? I'm looking at my iPad. The state of the iPad. What else do you have on? Uh, my my uh, iPhone. Let me show. All right. Well, turn that one off. Yeah. When it's muted, it's not a problem. But if you have two, then it'll happen. Is it'll start echoing or? I'll turn it off. Or like actually, you just mute the game. iPhone. Yeah, it feels like we're in a baseball game. Hello. All right. All right. It's off. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I have a sterling that you're showing right now. Um, and uh, there's an area where you can lower the drums, and then next to that is a tempo. Next to that, it says locks. I don't know if you're not talking about that today, but sometimes, all the time, if I am playing a normal um, uh, rhythm preset, and then I will play something there, and I might want to take it off, and I'll play... Uh, strings and violins, uh, uh, general preset number four. Okay, now I want to go back and change something or go back to normal. Then my drums will go sky high again. And the only way I can control that is to do the locks where I'm blocking out the, um, I, I'm blocking out the accompaniment. I don't know any other way to keep the drums down without them. You know, if I change things is, 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 uh, is there any other thing I can do other than lock it every time? Um, there's a couple things. I will also mention too, for anybody that has a, a bigger window instrument, you can lock the individual volumes by touching them together. So I don't know if you can see that from far yeah, away. Yeah, you can do that on Orc Plus on the side, but right. you can However, do it on the drums, you right? You cannot do that with drums. Right. Yeah. So you, for whatever reason, you can't lock the drum volume. Um, what you can do is, like you mentioned, using that locks button and then turning your accompaniment lock on. Um, the only other thing that I know of that you could do to keep the drum volume the same would be to save it in your presets. And then that will save the drum volume. Um, for whatever reason, you're not able to touch the two together and, and lock it like you can with some oh. of the ones. It so doesn't keep on using your accompaniment lock. That should take care of it for you. No, it doesn't lock. I mean, if I touch the volume and the drum button uh, in front of me and I, I lower the drums and then hit them together, they, they, I don't, it doesn't show turn on. No, it will not, it will not right. work on the drums is what he's saying. So the only yeah. way to, to lock the drummer is to do what you've been doing is press lock and then yeah. go to the accompaniment lock button. 
Right. Yep. And is that the only one I need to turn off? Whoops. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we have a class coming up in 10 minutes. And I don't want you to miss out on a, of a farewell performance by Brian. Farewell meaning for the moment for t this week. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple announcements. Uh, first of all, if you have any questions about anything that was discussed today, um, reach out to, uh, to your local store staff members, and um, it, our, st our store numbers are, are, are all, they're all in the stores now uh, at a limited capacity level, but we are working in the stores. If you're in a store location and we don't have a store, reach out to me, email me, and I will put you in touch with one of the stores and we can, we can help you. Um, so this is a great, great, cause we're basically, we're, we're getting, uh, uh, we're getting a lot of people that are on these classes. You can see, we try to mix these particular classes so that no matter what style of instrument you have, you know, I've heard them refer to the easy four and we had some fanfare owners we, uh conductor, you know, all sorts of models. So we try to keep it a nice variety for all of the different model types. Now on that note. Uh, as we move forward, we're going to continue doing these classes like we have been doing, um, and we'll be doing them every week. We're going to have at least two or three a week, and um, uh, as time goes on, we may consolidate and put two classes, and the reason for that is so that we could do other workshops, fill our schedule with other things. But for now, your time is your time. You'll see if there's any changes, we'll let you know. But speaking of uh, other workshops, coming up in June and next week on uh, when we have the class, by the time we, we have this class next week or sooner, we're going to post a schedule the month of June where we're going to have workshops for easy owners. There'll be a separate workshop for SU Lowry models. There'll be a separate workshop for the SD. We're going to have one for the E series, um, which includes the Aria, the Grand Marquis, Rialtos. Um, and then we're going to have a workshop for the A series. And then we're going to even open up a Conductor Magic Level 1 class for students starting off or fairly new in the hobby. And as we go, we'll have different instructors this week. We had Brian. He's going to do it again next week. And as time goes on, Sean Maloney is going to teach some of these workshops. We have Joni Monero. We have a lot of... Uh, Joe Thompson, I think I saw him in here today. He is uh, one of our clinicians in Arizona. The people love his workshops. Um, and uh, it would be just a nice way for you to get different education from different people from across the all geographic boundaries. Last but not least, and then we'll have Brian. Are you all set up to play? Okay. Uh, so he's going to give you a little taste. But uh, tomorrow we're going to have our, fame, our Facebook Live event. I'm going to play one or two songs. Uh, I'm prepared to play many in case we have some technical problems. <laughs> um, but if we don't, uh, Brian Lewis is going to be our feature performer tomorrow. But here's the twist. And this is the part I'm keeping my fingers crossed. We're going to do something a little different this week. Um, tomorrow, uh, and you're going to get an email today at 1 o'clock Arizona, 4 o'clock uh, Florida time, right around that time, and announcing the Facebook Live. Tomorrow, we're going to actually do it two ways. We're going we're gonna to do it via Zoom, like we're doing right now. So we're going to patch in just like we are now. And anybody who clicks the, the Zoom link and joins us, we're going to do the concert like this, and then we're going to broadcast it on our Facebook page. So you don't have to do both. You just have to pick one or the other. So mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the catch is our limit is 500 people. I think we'll be okay, but in case you don't get on, uh, it means we have our, you're the 501st person, and then you have to jump on the Facebook page. The reason why we're doing this is because we notice Facebook lags a little bit. The sound seems to be okay, but sometimes I'll say something, and um, it, three seconds later, <laughs> my mouth is moving, trying to catch up. The sound is always okay. So... This way, if you join us on Zoom, we're going to do the concert just like we're doing here, and then everything we're doing will broadcast to, to Facebook. So it'll be kind of fun. I'll send out all the materials this week and the videos from the classes, so stay tuned into that this weekend. So with that said, uh, you've got uh, about two and a half minutes to play a song, Brian. Give them a little taste of what you're going to do tomorrow, and then we'll do some farewells, and then we'll have to jump on our other class. 
It's all I'll yours. just play it twice as fast as I was planning on. How okay. about that? Thank you very much, Brian, and we'll hey, uh, tune in tomorrow. Here. Yeah, so we'll tune in tomorrow uh, if you'd like to join us on the Zoom for that. Um, and um, hopefully you'll have a fun time with that. And so thank you so much. You have about three minutes before we kick you off. <laughs> Not that we want to, but, oh, there's a big sign there. Diane, thank you so much. That's for you, Brian, not me. Very, very good. And so we'll see you next week. And um, if you want on your way out, I think Sean gave you the ability to unmute yourselves. You could say anything you like on your way out. Yep, we don't have time for questions, but we do have times for a goodbye and say goodbye to somebody else or however you'd like to. Great job, guys. Ooh. Thank you very much. It was good. Have a wonderful day, everyone. You too. I can be on two things at once. Check it. Oh, it worked. That, that was my test. Bye, everybody. We'll Bye. see you tomorrow on the Facebook Bye. live concert. Bye. And uh, have a wonderful, joyous day. Stay safe. I'll be schnitzel. Ha, <laughs> ha,